Welcome back to Piers Morgan. I it was a promo for my fascinating interview with Dana White, one of the most interesting people in world sport. The founder of UFC has become this multi-billion dollar business and he's a really interesting guy. That's tomorrow night for the hour, Dana White. Honestly, even if you don't know about him, you will want to know about him by the time you finish watching. It's very interesting stuff. I'm joined by my pack now, Associate Commentator Grace Blakely, Associate Editor of the Daily Mirror, Kevin Maguire, Talk TV's Esther Cracker. Well, welcome to all of you. Antiques Roadshow. Mm. <laughs> Shall we have a little clip from Antiques Roadshow to get this going? So if there's a call for these things to be repatriated, would you be happy to do that? Absolutely. Yes, definitely. So this came about because um, Sir Harold Kittermaster, Governor of the Protectorate, between 1926 and 1931, this was a, uh, back in Ethiopia, was given a golden robe and personal letter by Haley Selassie, uh, who then was running the country. Uh, and apparently now he should be giving this back, right? The family should be giving this back. What do we feel about this, Grace? I mean, this is all part of the sort of, I guess, paying reparations for sins of our ancestors, giving stuff back that countries took from each other centuries ago. I don't really see the point of all this. Because once you start, well, where do you stop? Well, I mean, the point is, you know, it's you often see in response to, to uh, problems like this, the idea that, oh, we'd have to undo all of human history because things have changed hands so many times over the course of, you know, millennia. But what we are living with today is a system of ongoing extraction and kind of colonial domination that exists in the world economy, which means that countries like Ethiopia remain very poor because their resources are extracted, because, um, you know, they are the, the people that live there are unable to move because they are on the forefront of issues like climate change. And we, as a country, are very rich in part because of the legacy of colonialism. And that's not something that we've ever really well, reckoned with. What does that with. have to do with this, though? Because this was a gift from Haile Selassie. It was actually a gift. Well, I mean, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't stolen. Well, this is, I think, the question. You know, We can talk in the abstract about whether or not reparations are good or bad, or whether or not we... Well, shouldn't we be talking about whether things? the BBC and their flagship Antiques Roadshow programme, whether they should be lecturing people who bring their heirlooms along that have been handed to them as gifts, send it back and sort of morally bullying them or blackmailing well, I think them? It's, I think it's ahistorical because it actually, you know, people that had these artefacts from back, back, that date back to millennia, actually there's an educational element there. So mm. there, was a, there was a point in southern US where they found a giant drum that was, um, you know, traditional to the Akan people in West Africa. And like, how the hell did this get here? Well, because it was, as, it was sent over as a gift, right? You have so many periods in history where you see art artefacts that are a result of trade or some sort of um, interaction between different types of people. Why, why would we suddenly have this discourse of giving it back. It was, it was, well, Kevin, I don't know. Let me bring in Kevin. Look, there. look, according to Ronnie Archer Morgan, an antiques expert in ethnic travel and folk art, the robe is valued in the region of four to five thousand pounds. It's not a huge amount of money. No. Um, I just don't like this idea now that everyone that goes down to Antiques Roadshow, one of the least like controversial programs imaginable. You literally open up your garage, take your stuff down, and find out if you've got lucky. Now yeah. you've got to feel as with everything in modern life that the Woke Brigade get their hands on. It's antique woke show, they're calling it on social media. Now you've got to feel guilty. You've got to be bullied into sending it somewhere out of the country because your great-great-grandfather, who was gifted it, didn't realise that in 100 years' time we'd all feel so yeah. guilty about everything. Piers, do you feel bullied yeah. by the antiques roadshow? <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's triggered. No, I, I feel sad the antiques roadshow has been woke up to this it's, level. It's the biggest row about the antiques roadshow since viewers complained that they interrupted uh, the programme to show the release of Nelson Mandela <laughs> after 27 years in prison. <laughs> when he, when if it when ain't broke, go and fix it. It's yeah. not hey, there for politics. I, I, look, it's, it's a, it's a programme that does try to have a more general understanding Standing mm. and just saying there's a there's a table uh, that's worth ten you know ten quid, and so I think it's a fair question to ask now and again. And the two granddaughters mm. who have possession of this rope, we saw they didn't object. Mm. They said they consider it and. There is a whole issue. Nobody goes and takes yep. some artefact to Antiques oh. Roadshow, then gets told it's worth a few grand and goes immediately, oh, yeah, oh. I must give it away. But, 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 Nobody does yeah, that. Because if you go to art galleries and museums, there's all sorts of stuff that's donated to, I, to I be think, seen think, by wider the people. It could be the, the case here. Yeah. would be if there was a wide, widespread outcry amongst the Ethiopians for that yeah. particular yeah. artefact. But, I, but the, chan the, the chances are they're giving this, this yeah. something that was given as a gift back to the Ethiopians, and they probably don't have any value for it 
Has anyway, anybody well, asked Ethiopia if they even want the damn thing? Well, right now. That was, that was the question <laughs> that they were going to ask. Ring them up. Hey, do you want said, this road back? There's some old dude. They just said, you know, should we consider is... asking whether or not they should be repatriated? And why? Why are you asking no, these no, no, questions? No, no, no. Because, because look, 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 if you go to the British Museum, it's full of looted treasure oh. in London. The Greeks would legitimately want back the Parthenon well, then I want, what, okay. what, 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 then I want stuff which, back from the Greeks. Which Lord well, Elgin There's bound to be bought. some stuff in Greece yep. which belongs to us. Well, I want it all back. Well, there we are. Let's try and do what, a deal. What, no, you let's find leave these. Why not? You can see the importance of let's some... Let's sleep in artifacts say, can, I just, can I just make sleeping. one point, Piers? Because I think this is really important. Ethiopia is currently in the middle of mm. a devastating humanitarian crisis that's linked to an ethnic conflict um, in the country that has been raging for a very long time. It's nowhere in the headlines. Nobody knows anything about the Tigray conflict. No one's talking about yeah. it. At the same time as the country's been ravaged by climate breakdown, a, 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 an mm. issue that Ethiopia has done almost nothing to create, which is largely caused by countries in the global north. And this issue of reparations is all very well and good, but let's actually start thinking about how we can undo the injustices that are causing the suffering that's of fine. those people today. That's and we fine. don't But I would rather that. we focus all our attention on how to improve a lot of people right now than worrying about what was going on 300 years ago when laws and morals and ethics were all completely different. Now, let's try and end on something, A, that's hilarious, <laughs> I'm told, because I haven't actually seen this yet, but I'm told when it's played to me, I'm going to react in utter horror. So we'll see. This is a TikTok video from Sam Smith. Just, I don't even just, know where to start. We need to see, to watch I don't, you know, Smith in booty shorts. I don't think there's ever been, and I speak as something of an expert in this genre, an attention seeker quite like Sam Smith. <laughs> and it works. Uh, it, it works. Well, I don't it. even know how we debate what I've just watched. Well, he's got a career as a children's entertainer. Uh, if it goes wrong with the thing. Is he just with the kids' face that, on his it's, thing? It's kind of creepy. It's, it's kind just of creepy, creepy, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of creepy. I don't Can't really we agree he's creepy, Sam Smith? Like, no. I don't know. I mean, he's doing, like, I would Homeless. say probably, like, 60% of the stuff on TikTok is creepy. That's, like, what gets people to watch. Well, you've got the wrong think, algorithms. Like... Mine are. Mine are, <laughs> mine, really? are, mine are golf shots and Ronald Reagan you know, speeches. You know, the thing is... Well, oh, my God. That's creepy. That is creepy. <laughs> Sam Smith, not a bad after <laughs> yeah. all. I, just, no, I, think he's, I actually think Sam Smith sits there thinking, how can I troll Piers Morgan? I do. <laughs> I, think, I think he thinks, <laughs> how can I wind him up today? And he's wor it's working. And he's working. Yeah, yeah. And every single time I fall for it. <laughs> and I used to love the Teletubbies, and now he's ruined it forever. Uh, anyway, great to see you, Pat. Thank you very much indeed. Whatever you're up to, uh, keep it a bit like Sam Smith. Uncensored. Good night. <laughs>